Hey, what is up guys? It's your boy Spee here, and today we're going to be watching a Gork replay. This is a game where he played Ursa. I thought he played the mid game exceptionally well. He did a really good job of taking the farm that I thought he should definitely take and showing up the fights that were actually high quality fights. And hopefully today's video will help you guys do the same thing. Continue to snowball as heroes that don't have innate, you know, really good farming abilities. I mean, Ursa is okay, but he's definitely not a Terra Blade or a Naga. And while you do that and you keep your game going in terms of CS, you're also able to show up to the occasional major fight and clean up. This video is going to help you do that, and let's get into it. By the way, guys, if you want to become absolutely broken, well, what you need to do is sign up to the Game Leap website down below right now. The reason why you should do that is because every single day we post a new video there. Content that you simply just will never get on YouTube, we post every single day to the website. It's really top tier stuff. I'm very proud of what I make over there. We also have other creators, many of my great friends who are top tier Dota players creating guides about different heroes, different roles, different items, skill builds, talent builds, everything you need to know to get to the next rank. So if you feel a little bit lost, you're a little bit stuck, click the link down below. I'll see you guys there. And now let's get into the video. All right, so getting into this game, I want to briefly talk about playing the top side of the map and why you would do that. So in this match in particular, like, his farm that he's taking, and other than this, we're going to be talking about team fights. but the farm that he's taking, I like it in this game in particular because, number one, Ursa doesn't necessarily like playing this bottom portion of the map, especially in a game like this, if his team is not shifting down here as a unit, right, if they're not going down here as three or four heroes, he's just going to get run at by a Batrider, right? You might be like, oh, but he is in rage. Doesn't matter. You know, Sticky Napalm is just going to keep reapplying. You're going to get kited. Eventually, you're going to die or at least get kicked out of the lane. And that's not so good. So there's that factor. Also, the bottom tower has already been taken, so it's not like his presence is needed to take that tower. And most importantly, I would say is Roshan. Just by him staying top allows him to constantly have the threat of Roshan on the enemy. If you think about it from a high MMR perspective, this is going to cause the enemy team to constantly have to check and essentially spend time and net worth making sure that Ursa doesn't Rosh. In fact, right here, you can see the enemy team, if you look at the mini-map, is funny enough, <laughs> scanning Rosh. And now, you might be wondering, okay, well, Speed, my opponents, the people in my bracket, they don't, they don't worry about this type of thing. They don't even think about Roshan. And honestly, you're probably right if that's a thought that came into your head. But then you just take Roshan. And so if you're playing Ursa or a hero that can do this type of thing, you should keep that in mind. It's really nice to just play this portion of the map. Unfortunately, the enemy team contests, but because they contest, they actually go very far out of position and his team was ready for this. Right, the Invoker's in position, Grim is in position. This was clearly a synergized play, and I thought it was really well done by Gork, because not only does he just, like, not just straight up walk into, a, into the pit, he also makes sure that his team is ready. On top of that, he really understands his, his peaks here. What I mean by that is he's really only strong when he has Enrage. Once Enrage has been committed, he can get bursted very easily. Mars can kill him, Bat can kill him, Timber can kill him, so he does a really, really great job of kiting out here waiting for the, you know, waiting for the enemy team to basically get stuck in a bad position, the Spirit Breaker to be able to reset, his teammates to essentially be able to frontline for him so that he doesn't get focused, and that's exactly what we see. All right, so you guys know how I mentioned that for essentially the 10 to 13 minute mark, approximately, he was playing the top side of the map, essentially contesting Roshan and farming that area. Now let's look at how the map has progressed and talk about a couple of key plays that he can make. Number one, the bot wave is shoving in. What does that imply, guys? This is some real high MMR stuff. It implies that it's very likely that a, a hero is going to show up the bottom to farm it. And when they do, that means they're not top. Because they're not top, what can Ursa do and his team do to take advantage of that? Play their wards. Look at their vision here. This is pretty insane, right? <laughs> they have three of these deep wards. Like, I mean, this is crazy. I don't know. Like, this is the most wards I've ever seen in one area. And they're all, like, pretty healthy wards. They're not about to run out by any means. So if I'm Gork, what I'm doing... At this point of the game is I'm thinking to myself, okay, the enemy team just committed a lot of big cooldowns. You didn't know that you weren't watching the game. I was, you know, so there's that. I don't have Enrage, but maybe when Arena is down and Lasso is down and Enrage is up, I can look to push onto the enemy side of the map. Or even before that, because of my god tier vision, I can do that anyway. And what do we see? Gork sees the Batrider pushing in bottom. He sees his Invoker shoving into the wards, right, pushing towards the ward connects, and kills off the Shadow Demon. And after that, he kind of just does a great job of continuing to play around this vision. I don't think people really understand how important this type of thing is. For the most part in your pubs, guys, you want to be farming. You want to be shoving in creep waves. Whether or not that's mid lane or the side lanes, 
Generally, as the carry hero, you're going to be shoving out the side lanes if you are even remotely survivable because you can do it. In this game, he shoves out mid because he got reload there. He identifies that the bot wave is pushing in. Top has good wards. Top is the play if a hero shows bottom. Even if a hero didn't show bottom, top still definitely can just be a play because of the wards and they get the kill. After that, with Wyvern being dead and Shadow Demon respawning, they kind of just take this as a time to go. On top of that, when your team has a, you know, when your team has an Ursa, and he hits his defusal timing, you, you can five man, right? Because you don't have a carry. You just have essentially another offlane or another hero that can generally fight in the early stages of the game. And you want to take advantage of that. And now what we're going to see is Gort barely start, you know, he's barely farming anymore. But you have to keep in mind because a lot of people will watch Gork's gameplay here and they'll think to themselves, oh, I'm going to pick Ursa and I'm going to pick Ursa and I'm going to run around and I'm going to go 8-0 at the, at the 10 minute mark. You're not. In fact, look at his kill score. It's 2-1 and 5 for the most part. He's been farming. He's only been participating in seven kills this game. Yeah, that's nothing. However, it's a really about a start to ramp up as he jumps this Mars. Evades the spear, forces out the arena. Really, really nice play, like super good play. Okay, they don't kill the Mars, but it doesn't matter. Ends up forcing out what I would consider a good Winter's Curse, but Shadow Demon comes in to try to save. He dies, Wyvern tries to come in to save. He dies, and the map is starting to collapse. You have to understand that this is predicated on number one, these dope wards, shout out the supports, and number two, defusal. When you are playing these brawly heroes, whether or not you're a Slark or an Ursa, you need to play the timings. Farm till the timings. Your heroes are generally actually quite bad until you have these items. The only exception to this, as he kills the Battle Rider, the only exception to this is when the enemy team is generally diving, okay? Dota is a game of exceptions. You guys know that. I say that in my videos all the time. Yes, you could come up with a million examples where an Ursa with, without defusal should show up to a fight. Okay, you could probably think of a bunch in your head right now. Right, guys? Think of a bunch in your head. Or even pre-defusal, you should show up to a fight. Enemy team is diving your tier months. Enemy team is diving your tier threes. Okay, enemy team is roaching and they're low. Yes, you could show up to all these engagements. But these are niche and don't always happen and often are unreliable. You want to make the game generally as reliable as possible. For Ursa, that's more often than not when you get the Fusil, because you can solo kill, you know, supports, and even sometimes cores. So one thing I, I will say that I, I actually think even though, like, Gork messes up here, this is something I need to add into my videos a lot more, so you guys can get better and gain rank. Okay, Gork makes a very common mistake that carry players make all the time. <laughs> uh, I don't really have, like, a name for it, but essentially, like, what it is, is that if you get a set of kills, you go berserk mode. If you if you've been owning the enemy team and haven't even come close to dying and have just been crushing them, you think to yourself, oh yeah, that's gonna keep happening. When the reason why it happened in the first place was a set of circumstances. It likely happened due to the enemy team's positioning or your positioning or your wards or an Aegis. Something, right? There, there's so many factors. Now let's see what he does. Okay. His team was fighting bottom. He wanted to show up, didn't get there in time. His team goes down. Pretty poor fight from his boys, okay? Bit of a mistake on his team's part, no doubt. So, he's gonna shift back to mid. A very common play. If your team dies in the side lane, often the main thing you want to do is get to mid, clear that creep wave, and essentially make sure the enemy team can't push mid, and it's likely the safest farm if, it hap if, if a fight happened in the side lane. So that's what he does. Clears out mid. Okay, love this, like this. Now, here's where the problem happens. His whole team is dead, besides an Io. Yes, he gets a haste, but the problem ends up being that they have a Shadow Demon who can potentially purge it. Don't think he has ulti right now, but it's a short cooldown. Okay, he doesn't have it right now, but they also have a Winter Wyvern who's gonna stall out this haste. You're gonna see it in this clip here, okay? He's going Berserk mode. Do I understand why he goes for this kill? Absolutely. This guy seems pretty alone. And in Gork's eyes, he likely thinks that he can kill this guy from full. And it ends up being very close, but the problem is, it's a risk reward situation. His whole team is dead, okay? He can farm his entire jungle. And that doesn't mean that the best play in Dota is just to farm your entire jungle every time you can, okay? That means you're not put putting pressure on the enemy side of the map. But you have to look at this as a risk reward. He jumps mid, you know, frankly, he doesn't have a basher. Honestly, Shadow Demon should have disrupted him and not... Uh, right, not himself, because then he'd just be stuck here, even getting hit by himself as he comes out, and Gork, like, really, really commits to it, which is kind of crazy to me, because you have to assume at this point the enemy team is gonna TP in, 
Shadow Demon even buys back a beautiful Winter's Curse. <laughs> it was a really, really nice Winter's Curse. Sets up for the lasso, burns out the haste duration, and Gork goes down. So guys, the biggest thing you can learn essentially from this video up until now is stay in your safe lane often as long as possible as these heroes that don't have flash farm mechanics. Yes, there's exceptions to that if you think you can easily be ganked in that portion of the map. Okay, you should probably leave. But stay in your area, farm your items. When you hit your timing, look at the map and say, where are my deep wards? And if you don't have any, what should you do? Do it yourself. Okay, get down the deep vision. If you're playing a Jug, or a Slark, or a Life Stealer, or a TB or a Naga, you can shove in the waves very safely, especially compared to your supports. There's no reason you can't push in bottom and get up a deep ward that your team can smoke to or play to later on into the game. And you also might be thinking, oh, Gork has such good teammates, I can never do this stuff. As we're talking about Jug, talking about Slark, these heroes are the kings of making solo plays. Learn to get down your own deep vision, and learn to make plays off of it. All right, and thank you guys so much for watching. I know this video is on the shorter end. I kind of just wanted to talk about a few key ideas, give you guys something to think about, and also hopefully inspire you to just to, you know, run a couple games of Versa. I wouldn't necessarily recommend Slark. I know I mentioned him in, in this video quite a bit, but <laughs> I think that hero's pretty trash. To be honest, it's not the grit. Most games, you know, this one race not that bad, but at the end of the day, I think uh, heroes like Ursa and Jung are a little bit better right now. Nonetheless, I can't wait to the patch, guys. You, like. I know this is a bit off tangent, but frankly, like, as I'm making this video, I'm like trying to come up with what I want to talk about. And I'm like, oh, I want to talk about some different builds, some different heroes. I'm like, I just made build, I just made a build video, right? I made a tier list. I'm like, I really want to make like, um, you know, new builds, new, new things to try. Cause like, that's always so fun and you guys enjoy them. So we're, I'm just kind of waiting on that. I can't wait to like, literally when that patch comes out, man, I'm going to make so much content. Like, I'm so excited to do that. I hopefully you guys are excited too. I'm literally, I'm dude, I'm so pumped. But all right, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you in the next one. And I'm out. Peace. And that's all. But remember, before you leave, come on, before you tune out, subscribe to the Game Leap website where we are going to help you get to the next rank. If you're stuck, click the link down below. And I'm out. Peace.